Hello, Chef Marcus Giuliano here, and I'm your chef on a mission. Today's mission is salmon. I'm gonna keep hitting with salmon, 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 pen salmon, feedlot salmon, farm salmon, it's all the same. Atlantic salmon, Scottish salmon, Faroe Island salmon, uh, Bay of Fundy salmon, Chilean salmon, uh, New Zealand salmon, uh, British Columbia king salmon, farm, 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 farm. I'm gonna keep hitting home about farm salmon. I wanna quote an article here by the fish, wildfishconservancy.org. Uh, I also copied, I also did this article with Gerald Salante on Trends in the News, which is a great YouTube channel, Trends in the News. Uh, Gerald's uh, switching it up uh, from all politics based to mixing some food items in there. Uh, good food items, great minds think alike, Gerald and I like to say, uh, which is what one of the uh, one of my fans left on my YouTube channel uh, when they found out that I was Gerald and I were working together. Gerald's a trends forecaster, political forecaster for the last 30 years, 40 years. Uh, check out Trends Journal. But in the meantime, let's talk about the article I talked about on Gerald's show. Uh, so last year there was a salmon escapes in uh, Puget Sound and Washington State. What happens is the salmon nets that sit out in the ocean, uh, they're nets, they have holes in them. Uh, the, they're big enough or small enough so the fish can't swim through them so the fish don't escape into the wild. So what happens is those, those holes, those nets fill in with algae and mussels. It doesn't let the feces pass through and that's a whole other issue that they have to do that's called bumping right? they let the gas out because everything gets trapped in there because nothing can get out. The feces and the food droppings and dead fish. Um, but what happens when tidal or currents come in, ocean currents come in, uh, waves come in, storms come in, and they can't pass through those nets. Well, the whole salmon farm shifts and sometimes mangles and twists and breaks open. And then what happens? You have a hundred fish. That's a very big understatement. You have thousands of fish, sometimes a hundred thousand fish escaping into the wild. And what kind of consequences does that have? One would, one would think the, um, an average person would say, wow, that's great. They're restocking the ocean with salmon. That's fantastic. So what's the problem here? We're going to be able to catch those and eat those and this and that, and we can be able to, they'll be able to make babies and so on and so on and so on. And that is the farthest from the case. Uh, now, uh, Cook Aquaculture has got on under, a lot of under heat in Washington State. Washington State has formally evicted Cook Aquaculture. Uh, as of these last couple of weeks, they've issued them, uh, evictions and saying that your salmon uh, farms, your nets, your, the way you're acting, the way you're conducting business here in Washington State, uh, we don't want that and you're at fault for letting all these salmon out in the ocean and, and you're breaking violations and you're not operating properly. The president of Cook Aquaculture got up there, Mr. Cook, and basically said, I can't believe this, you know, our findings are totally different, but I'm not here to argue. I'm not here to disargue, disprove. He got up and on, on this interview and he goes, but our numbers are different. And again, we're not here to argue, but I don't know where they got their numbers from. I don't know how they figured it out. And he's doing that whole spiel. And then he goes, the 180 people that are going to be lost here, you know, it's too bad. It's too bad. We're losing jobs. I, I care about these 180 people that are losing their jobs. And, you know, and I was like, oh man, like he's playing that card, right? But here's the reality of what his business does, what his industry does. It destroys the environment. The 180 jobs that are gonna be lost uh, uh, from Cook Aquaculture is far less than the people he's putting out of business by spewing diseases into the ocean and killing off the wild salmon. People that don't have a livelihood left anymore, uh, the natives up there, the First Nations in Canada that, that don't have fish to eat, the orca whales that can't carry full term anymore, the pregnancies because there's no food, the bears that are turning to cannibalism on the shores because there's no food for them to eat, uh, the Native Americans or the indigenous people, the First Nations in Canada that have lost everything because there's nothing left in the ocean for them to catch. And he's telling you that, you know, his numbers are different and 180 people and it's terrible, and, you know, and basically that why are they doing this and this is not a good thing and this is industry. And so here's the reality of what happened. He says a little fish escaped. Numbers report many, many, many more fish escaping. They report him being negligent. And he says, well, I cleaned the nets and it only can take a week or two for them to fill back in again and this and that. And however, and the pictures weren't taken. It's a whole controversy. But however, the, 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 the agencies to be up there said, no, no, you're out. You're out. See you later. So wildfishconservancy.org. Now, this is the ramifications, folks, of when farm salmon escape into the wild. 
February 15th, 2018. Contrary to agency claims, escaped salmon, Atlantic salmon, were infected with a highly contagious and harmful virus. Lab results show that 100% of escaped Atlantic salmon tested were infected with the virus of Norwegian origin. Uh, Wild Fish Conservancy, WFC, regrets to announce test findings that confirm long-held fears about the nature of Atlantic aquaculture in Puget Sound. This week, the WFC received test results from an independent lab at the University of Prince Edward Island. WFC contacted the lab to test heart, gill, and kidney tissue samples obtained from 19 Atlantic salmon collected after the massive Cypress Island net pen escape late August. The 19 fish were donated to WFC by commercial, tribal, and recreational fishermen and were caught in the Straits of Juan de Fuca, the site of Cypress Island Escape, the 50 mile, then 50 miles up the Saget River. Independent labs demonstrate that 100% of the escaped salmon tested were highly infected with Piscine orthovirus PRV and the strain of the virus is of Norwegian origin. PRV is known to be highly contagious and debilitating, uh, debilitating salmonoid virus. It is proven to be the casual agent for heart and skeletal muscle inflammation, HSMI disease. HSMI causes a crippling onset of symptoms in salmonoids, symptoms that would either kill or render a fish incapable of surviving in natural conditions. HSMI has caused up to 20% mortality in Atlantic salmon pens in Norway. Significant, significant mortalities of HSMI are also been reported in farmed Atlantic salmon in Scotland and in Chile. Recently, HSMI has been reported in farmed Atlantic salmon in British Columbia. Peer-reviewed scientific literature demonstrates a highly likelihood that Atlantic salmon net pens infected with PRV will amplify the virus and spread it into wild salmon. PRV survives well in seawater and is known to spread out long distances from the farms. The spread of PRV from farmed Atlantic salmon to wild salmon has been well documented and in 2017, a BC study demonstrated that significantly more salmon, wild salmon were infected with PRV if they had been exposed to salmon farms that were located, uh, were, located were far away. Peer reviewed science also shows that even without the occurrence of HSMI, the PRV can negatively impact the salmon's ability to compete and survive in the wild. And this goes on and on with footnotes and the detriment of how wild salmon are getting infected, how farm salmon are spreading it, and that this is just not a good situation whatsoever. Every time you support farm salmon, Rick Muin, Martha Stewart, whoever you are out there, Tom Colicchio, who supports, uh, I think, farm salmon. I don't want to. I don't want to get out there ahead of myself on Tom Colicchio, but one of his menus did say salmon. And if it is wild, Tom, please say that it's wild. Uh, but it just basically said salmon. Um, so. Every time these chefs are doing this, every time consumers do this, every time, every time um, people are buying this wild salmon, this is what's happening, folks. It's causing a detriment. There's nowhere in the world that wild salmon survive where there's salmon farms. It's impossible. Uh, Alex Morton told me in a conversation two weeks ago, there's no right way to do the wrong thing. It's just the whole salmon farming system is set up and screwed up from the from the very, very beginning. Some salmon farms say, well, we're better than others and, we're, and we've cleaned up our act. And it may be that they've cleaned their act up a little bit. It may be that they're using one less toxic chemical. It may be that they're, that they're using a less density. It may that they might be using one less, it might be a little step further ahead. They might have come a long way or a little way. They might make you think they've come a long way, but there's still no right way to do the wrong thing. It's like trying to win a race driving backwards when everybody else is driving forwards. It's hard to see, the car doesn't go as fast. One slight turn can spill catastrophe, right? One mistake, uh, catastrophe happens all the time in these pens uh, through diseases and viruses and the whole mortality rate and fish are put down and killed. And, and so it's, this is a disaster folks, 100% disaster farmed salmon. Um, don't believe what the ratings say out there, Monterey Bay Aquarium, or whoever says, well, there's better salmon farms out there, this and that. It's, it's, it's minutely better if that's the case at all. Uh, these salmon farms know that they're under high scrutiny and they're willing to say and do anything to make them look better. 
better, including deceive the public. When you go on Schooner Bay's website, you'll see Schooner Bay says, saving wild salmon. Every time you have one of our fish, you're saving wild salmon, which is the farthest from the case. It actually takes far more salmon, uh, far more protein out of the ocean to make. If you're harvesting a million pounds of wild fish to make pellets, you're only gonna get a half a million of salmon back. So it's just, it's a very imbalanced ratio of what you're taking out of the ocean resource wise to get back what you're putting on somebody's plate. So when they say that there's gonna provide food for the world, they actually have to do that at a very costly net deficit of food. Uh, so that's really not gonna happen. Some of these guys are saying now, farmers are saying, well, let's do, instead of harvesting wild fish, let's start doing uh, pig and chicken parts. Uh, I was just told recently that Cook Aquaculture bought a processing plant. Uh, listen to this, folks, especially if you're a chef that's supporting True North brand, which is owned by Cook Aquaculture. They bought a processing plant, I think in New Brunswick, uh, that a uh, uh, processing plant, uh, um, a uh, plant that, um, what am I looking for? A rendering plant, a rendering plant that does chicken and pork and will render the byproducts of chicken and pork into pellets for their fish to eat. Uh, that is a common thing that's been done throughout Europe for the last few years is uh, all, uh, chicken pork parts in the salmon food. That's not part of the natural diet whatsoever, but Cook Aquaculture thinks that it is and so do the other guys out there. Uh, so they might say that they're lose using less wild fish. That's true because they have now pig and chicken parts to put in. And maybe they're putting grains like soy or corn or something else in a GMO grain, possibly. Uh, but they do a great job convincing chefs that they're that they are doing uh, the right thing, and that chefs should be serving their product. And uh, people like Martha Stewart needs to be selling it, and she's selling it. She's peddling on the internet uh, like six six ounce fillets for a hundred dollars. I heard that, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me! Highly, highly overpriced. Uh, toxic salmon and Martha Stewart taking a huge cut from that because that's just ridiculous. Six six ounce fillets for $99. That's just ludicrous to even think that. Um, you, can go to the, you can go to a restaurant and buy uh, salmon in, in a restaurant for $20, $25 a portion and get all your side veg and everything and, and have a, a plate for, you can get four of those for $100 in a restaurant and get served the food. So uh, True North Salmon, there's nothing special about it um, except their marketing. Schooner Bay, there's nothing special about it except for their marketing. Lock Duhart, there's nothing special about their marketing. Faroe Island, nothing special about their marketing. Uh, Verlasso, nothing special about their marketing. It's just propaganda, marketing, deceiving customers, deceiving chefs, and killing the environment and um, raping, really just pillaging and raping these local communities that they're, that they're operating in. If you ever want to find out how, how good a salmon farm is, talk to the locals in that community. Find out what's going on in that community. So if you're a chef and you get approached by a food salesman saying, this is the fish, this is the salmon, this is the one that's different, this is the one that's changing the industry say, I'd like to speak to 10 people in that community. I'd like to hear the people that are, that, that are living in that community and that see what that business is doing. I wanna see how they treat the locals. I wanna see how they treat the ocean. I wanna see firsthand from people that are subjected to it every day and see if they're really welcome in that community. And that's a true test. So chefs, that's the only way to really find out. And I'm, I can pretty much tell you, you're not, you're not, it's gonna be totally different than what the salesperson's telling you. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano, thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe, and definitely pass it on.